What's happening? Hello world and welcome to your 20th SQL Server tutorial. My name is Johnny DeLuca and today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, compression table row and index compression. I'm going to be showing you how to compress a table or index using SQL Server Management Studio. How to do the same table index and row compression with T-SQL scripts. So to get started, please connect to an instance of SQL Server and go to your databases folder and expand that. I'm going to expand AdventureWorks 2012. Expand tables. Now we are looking for sales dot sales order detail. We're going to want to right click this sales dot sales order detail and then we are going to storage manage compression and then you will see this little wizard here you click this box do not show me this again next all right from here we are going to want to check this box use same compression type for all partitions now here from the drop down we want to set this guy to row and then from here we are going to click next and you'll probably save about three megabytes of disk space by implementing row compression on this table so pretty cool all right we're going to hit next now we're going to go over here to run immediately we are going to go ahead and click next then we're going to get this little summary here of what we got going on we can expand this and look at it if we want see what's what pretty cool and we're just going to uh, click uh, finish and then we should get alright boom we are done pretty cool something to note compressing the heap or the clustered index does not compress the non-clustered indexes. If you want to compress the non-clustered indexes, you must do so individually. So now, with that in mind, I'm going to show you how to compress a non-clustered index. So, alright, let's start over like from the beginning. So, pull this guy back up and this guy back up. Now we're going to expand our databases folder. We are going to expand AdventureWorks 2012. We'll be expanding this uh, tables folder. We're going to go down to um, we're going to sales dot sales order header, not detail like the last one. We're going back to this, so. We're going to, excuse me, not right click. We're going to, want to go to the indexes folder right here. Now we want to right click. And then we're going to uh, manage compression. Excuse me, I don't want to right click uh, indexes. I want to expand it. Now we're going back to, as we have in several other tutorials, and we're going to go to a similar table that is the ix underscore sales order header underscore sales person ID alright that's this guy right here you want to right click storage manage compression and then we want to go back up and follow the same steps as we did before which if you'll remember we are going to Use same compression for all partitions. We want row. We're going to click next. We're going to click run immediately. We're going to click next. And then this is again just a little data compression wizard summary. We're going to click finish. And then we're going to click close. Pretty cool. All right, now. Um, if you prefer using T-SQL over Management Studio, you can execute the following code that I'm about to show you to compress the clustered index on the sales dot sales order header table and the IX underscore sales order header underscore sales person ID non clustered index. So to do that, I'm going to go up here, new query. Alright, I want you to 
copy this code down into your query editor and execute it and here we go man's completed successfully okay on top of that you can also compress a table during initial creation with ksql and the code I'm about to show you will create a table that has a primary key that will be row compressed. So, and to do that, we are going to get rid of this guy and we no longer need him. New query. Copy this code down. And execute. Oh, sorry, I had the uh, wrong database name in there. Anyways. I just have to change that database name to AdventureWorks 2012 or whatever other database I might like to use. And it would say commands completed successfully. Um, yeah, I could change that to my database too. That was one of the ones that we used before. But I don't even really need to do so because you see what it's going to do. Um, something to note, um, nothing about creating a table changes. Um, when you use this script, however, you must add the option at the end, which appears um, right here at the very end, the with data compression row. Um, now, whenever data is inserted into the table, it's going to be row compressed. Using this method will compress the clustered index on the table, or if the clustered index does not exist, it will compress the key. And I don't believe we've discussed the heap yet, but we will probably be discussing that in a later tutorial. Anyways, um, yeah, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you in my 21st tutorial. Actually, before we move on, I want to further talk to you and expand a little more on this. I realized I didn't do that. So, um, you may often hear that disk space is cheap, and that... We should not be too concerned if databases are growing at an excessive rate. Just buy more disks, something to that effect. Well, what most managers don't realize is that we're not talking about disks that you buy at some large electronic store like Fry's. SQL Server and other relational database management systems require fast, redundant sets of disks. That coupling takes disk price from cheap to often very expensive. In addition, if you must include high availability and disaster recovery as part of your topology, then your costs are doubled. So to offset some of the costs, SQL Server includes a feature that allows you to compress your data at different levels, specifically tables and indexes. You can actually compress any of the following. You can do... Number one, a table that is stored as a heap. It does not have a clustered index. Or two, a table that has a clustered index or a non-clustered index or an indexed view or a partition. And I'll probably be covering partitions in a later tutorial. Not only can you reduce the disk requirements of SQL Server with compression, but in most cases you can also improve the overall performance of your disk subsystems and query request times. The actual compression rate is dependent upon two primary factors, data characteristics and the uh, corresponding data type. While not all data types are affected by compression, most are. And then a little more on understanding row compression. Um, the cool thing about SQL Server compression that is that it is completely transparent to applications that need to access the underlying data. Now, while compression does change how the data is physically stored, developers do not have to change anything syntactically in their code. Row compression, by nature, is not a very complicated process. Basically, it identifies the data type of each column, converts it to variable length, and finally reduces the amount of required storage to only what is needed. So as a result, compression increases the amount of data that can be stored on a page. Additionally, it may reduce the amount of metadata associated with the record. All right, for example, if you have a column that has a data type of small int, 
By default, it will allocate two bytes of storage. However, the value inserted into the column may require only one byte of storage. If that is the case, enabling compression on that table will reduce the amount of allocated storage to only what is needed, being one byte. This process is repeated for every column in the table or index. So, yeah, it's just a little more useful information on compression. Again, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll see you in the next one.